You're listening to the Identity Sports Podcast, where we dive into the world of faith, sports, and inspiration with athletes from across the country. I'm your host, Zach Vogel. Hey guys, welcome to the Identity Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Vogel. In today's episode, we dive into the life of recently graduated D1 collegiate golfer, Mary-Kate Smith. Mary Kate was named the 2023 ASUN Golfer of the Year and won the individual title at the 2023 French Broad Intercollegiate Championship. Outside of golf, she loves The Office, great show, being outside, and trying all the amazing coffee shops. Mary Kate, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so let's start with the, the toughest question on here. If you had to pick one favorite character on The Office, who would it be? And can you think of a favorite like quote or scene from them that you were just like, that's my favorite? I would say definitely Jim. I think he's one of the more underrated funny guys on the show. Um, all the characters are super funny. But I just love all of the pranks that he plays on all, on Dwight and always their relationships just funny how they're always just trying to mess with each other. So, yeah. Yeah, it's fun to see how their relationship kind of dives and grows over over the course of the show too because the office is one of my favorite shows i've rewatched it probably seven or eight times um, but just how it starts off with all those pranks and then over time you know you kind of find out that they secretly really care for each other and they like each other and then i don't want to there's really no spoilers anymore i mean the show's been out for like 12 years but then to see them at dwight's wedding at the very end it, it's kind of a fun full circle but dwight's a good one i'd, I'd probably have to say kevin's one of my favorite just because he's so random and it's just the, the quick cut scenes but yeah it, it's, a, it's a great show but so tell us a little bit you know your ex-collegiate golfer you're kind of in that transition heading out of golf into you know a full-time accounting job um, but before we get there you know tell us a little bit about how you fell in love with the game of golf yeah, so growing up, I was always just surrounded by golf. My dad is just a huge golfer, has always loved the game a lot, and it was a way for us to spend time together. He would always take me up to the driving range after church on Sundays, and that just kind of became our thing, and we would go play and um, practice together, and, and then my parents just put me in every single golf clinic and camp they could find, and so I just really, really began to love it from a young age. And then just gradually as I got older, I just started really focusing on practicing more and trying to get better and playing in tournaments and loved the competition. And luckily it, I was able, fortunate enough to play in college. So it was a great journey and very grateful for it. So when you're thinking back in your whole career in golf, is there like a, a shot that sticks out to you? Was it in a tournament or like a hole that like is, you know, something that is just like, that's my favorite moment of my career? I would say maybe not a shot, but a specific time would be. So my uh, golf team was the, we won conference our, my senior year. So last year, and, you know, we were coming down the stretch. It was really close. And, you know, I was trying to make, make a lot of birdies, get something going so that we could to help my team win. And I missed a short putt and I was kind of frustrated. And then my, our assistant coach, she came up to me and was like, okay, well, I was frustrated. And she was like, okay, what are you going to do about it? And then she came with me and helped me to make some more birdies and help the team win. So that was definitely a really big memory. Yeah, it, it's fun too with golf. You know, collegiate golf's different because it is a team aspect where golf is usually an individual sport. So it's fun, you know, to all of a sudden have that experience in college. But, you know, you played at Lipscomb University. We had your, your coach, Shannon O'Brien, on in a few episodes ago and another one of your players. So we've heard a lot about the uniqueness and the cool aspects of that faith based program. Tell us a little bit about your experience there and how it changed your overall perspective on the game of golf. Yeah, it definitely did change my perspective and it was very fulfilling to learn about how I can just play for something greater than myself. And um, so coming into college, I had always heard of about, you know, like obviously my identity is not in golf and it's in, the, in Jesus, but definitely through my experience at Lipscomb, I learned how I can 
just use the game of golf as a platform to share God's love and joy and peace with everyone around me and play for something greater than myself. Definitely a time that sticks out to me is um, my sophomore year. My coach Shannon had just come on with us and she was walking with me in the conference tournament that year. And we were playing with one girl and she just started talking to her the whole round. And, you know, I was kind of like, why, why are you talking to her? Like, we're, we're supposed to be really competitive, like really focused right now. I'm trying to beat her. And it's funny now because we're really pretty good friends and have played a lot since then. But um, it was in that moment where I realized like, man, this is such a cool opportunity that I get to spend these five plus hours with someone I never would have met, just getting to know their story and them and being a light to them. And I started realizing like the way that I carry myself and the way that I treat my playing com competitors definitely makes a difference and they can notice when something's different and definitely the Lord works through any little sm smile or the way that I carry myself and can do so much with that so it definitely changed my perspective and made it a lot more fulfilling yeah was there like a, a Bible verse or something that you carry around on the course too, that kind of helps you get in that mind frame, you know, typically competitors before a match, they, you know, listen to pump up music or something like that. What does it look like for you to not only be a competitor, but to also prepare your heart spiritually before you go out and tee it off? So before every round, I would do, um, a little like pre-round prayer meditation just to you know, relax my muscles, relax my mind, and also just set my mind on the Lord and whatever he had for me in that day. And um, I usually would listen to a worship song and just try to flood the, the, let those words flood through my mind and also just relax my body and just spend time in prayer about like what it looks like for in that day for me to honor and glorify the Lord and all that I'm doing. And um, I definitely had a lot of verses throughout my time um, written in my yardage book. Um, but the biggest one that I had written down was Matthew 6, 33 through 34, which says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all be given to you. And do not worry about tomorrow for today has enough trouble or for tomorrow will take care of itself. And each day has enough troubles of its own. Um, and that one really helped me to just focus on, just keep my mind set on the Lord and also to just, be able to stay so present in that moment, which I think as an athlete is really important to stay super present in every shot or play or anything like that. So I would always, I had a lot of different note cards in my yardage book that I would read before each shot from, I usually would stick with one, but <laughs> from various times. And so that was a big one for me. Yeah, no, that's really cool to hear. You know, sometimes people write it on their golf glove or things like that, but to have it in the yardage book is is a cool idea. Um, is that something that, you know, did, did you have a mentor that kind of led you down that path? Is that something maybe your dad would teach you or something when you were playing the Sundays after church? What kind of led to that? Yeah, I think definitely my teammates um, pushed me towards that. We all would have different note cards written down and would write note cards to each other as well with just different truths and scripture on there to just encourage one another. It kind of started, I worked with a mental coach all of throughout college and I had a separate note card with just different process goals on it. And so that's kind of where that I got the note card idea. And I would just read those before every shot to make sure that that's what I'm focusing on. And I just, he really, encouraged me to constantly feed my mind with those things so that um, that's what I would be mostly focused on. You might not have already realized it, but this podcast is produced by a nonprofit donor supported identity sports. We're just a little nonprofit producing this podcast in the beautiful loft of a downtown thrift store. We aren't getting paid big bucks like a for-profit business. Nope. We're making this podcast not for money, but because everyone on our team believes in what we do. We give athletes a platform to share their faith and their inspirational stories, but that means that we rely on people like you. If you've been to one of our Tales from the Tour or Tales from the Dugout gatherings, or if you've watched or heard an inspirational story from an athlete who found their identity in Christ, or if this is the first time someone shared or you've come across our podcast, I have a request. 
I wonder if you'd take a quick minute to do something for us. Get into your browser and search for identitysports.com and find the donate page. It doesn't matter how much you commit, a few dollars or a few hundred. It just matters that you show us that you want us to keep telling these stories. My recommendation? Pause this episode. Do it real quick before you forget at identitysports.com. So you guys at Lipscomb University, just like you were saying, you guys won a few conference championships, a few players won different accolades, yourself included, won some tournaments. So we know what success looks like from a worldly standpoint. Within your guys' program, how did you, what was the measuring stick for success? What did it look like? Was it certain shots? Was it certain tournament wins? What was that like for you guys? We focused a lot on the process and making sure that, you know, are we preparing for each event to the best of our ability? And then are we going through each and every shot as best as we can um, to focus on those controllables? Because so much of the outside success and external success isn't within our control. But if we're doing everything that we can in that moment to control it and to just focus on all those different pieces that lead to that success, you know, I feel like that is a big determinant of like, okay, we can walk away knowing we did everything that we could um, and then measuring that as success. But I would say internally, um, definitely Shannon, our coach, she treated every player the same and there was no hierarchy of um, the team. It was always like the team based off of people's individual success. It was, we're all, we're all equal before the cross. And so we're all, you know, equal in her eyes and mean as much to her. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of that competing biblically aspect. You know, there's, there's what does success look like from a worldly standpoint, but what does success look like in that? And so knowing that, you know, your identity is not found in the game of golf. Your identity, your identity doesn't change from shot to shot. You know, you're, you're rested, your victory has been won on the cross already. And so uh, you alluded to kind of speaking with a, a mental coach throughout your career. What were kind of the conversations there? Because one of the things that's so fascinating now is this whole aspect of players trying to focus more on that, but then get in this like mindset of playing free. What would you say playing free looks like in your mind out there on the golf course? I would say this is something that I worked on a lot through college and is, I feel like a really big thing. And I feel like you're, I personally, and I would say most athletes are playing their best when they are playing free, um, but it takes a lot of work to get there. For me personally, um, something me and Paul, my mental coach, worked on so much was just constantly focusing on the process, going through your pre-shot routine as thoroughly as you can, and just being so focused on that that you're not focused on the result, because those that's ultimately what's going to lead to the result. And so that was a big factor for me in playing free was focusing on the process but then also playing free knowing that my identity is not in the result and that I'm you know no matter what happens like I'm a daughter of the king I'm not it doesn't my identity is not going to change based off of the score that I shoot and that also helped me to play free yeah and that just you know takes me back to that verse that you shared earlier, you know, basically don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. You know, you can take that even at a smaller scale and by shot, um, don't worry about the next shot because that shot will take care of itself. So focusing on that process, it's so cool to see how intertwined with these mental health coaches or, you know, you know, the mental performance side, how much you can tie that back to scriptures that have existed, you know, since the beginning of time. So it's really cool just to that cross, you know, examination and the, the lines between, you know, sport and how to basically looks to compete biblically. So that's really cool. I appreciate you sharing that. Take us through, you know, that conference championship. You alluded to it a little bit earlier. What was the team atmosphere like? How was that different than maybe other teams that you were part of in high school? Yeah, um, I would say our team, I'm I was very grateful to be a part of a team that was so encouraging of one another. And we really genuinely wanted to see one another play well and do well. And, um, you know, there's always that competitive, like a healthy competitiveness of like, oh, I want you to play well, but I also want to play better, which 
helps elevate the whole team. And I think that's what you need to be successful. But I also think that we were just, you know, we had that confidence that we are capable of winning and we knew that we had it within us. But we also knew that like the Lord knew what was going to happen no matter what. And that no matter what happened again, like we weren't, it wasn't, the world was going to go on and it wasn't the end of, you know, our identities or anything like that. It was just an opportunity to be able to play to the best that we know how to play. And so there was a lot, we felt collectively a lot of peace in that tournament, which was so nice because a lot of tournaments can be stressful and anxious, but there was just this different peace in that tournament than we'd had in others where we just knew like, okay, we can do this, but also like we know no matter what happens, like we'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, that goes back to another verse, just the peace without peace beyond understanding. And so to be able to be in that moment where you are out there and just feeling confident and feeling peace because you know you did the prep work, you know you belong there. And ultimately knowing that if you go out and shoot, you know, 20 over, you're still the same person. Your family still loves you. Jesus still loves like you again, your identity is found in the cross. Whether but you see some of these other athletes out there that can be and you know could be some of your competitors, they seem so miserable because they don't have that same peace. They have that mindset of you're only as good as your last shot or as your last score. Um, so it, it's tough to see that, but it's so cool to hear stories from, from you and some of your teammates and other, you know, programs around the country that are trying to do the same thing where you do sport the way that God intended it to be, how you can uplift your competitors. You can still go out there and try and beat them and beat them and do it, do it well, but it, it looks a little different. It looks like a, Hey, it, keep your head up or, Hey, you know, you, you got the next shot, kind of an encouraging word where it's just so, it's so different to see. And that's that opportunity that Christ gives you to plant those seeds because, you know, I'm sure you can think back on different people you've played with. Sometimes the golf score doesn't even matter. I mean, my favorite rounds, I don't even remember what I shot or what my friends shot. It's just the people that you're with. And to think that God had brought those competitors, he had that ordained way before either of us were born. And so to be rec to recognize that in the moment and use that as your mission field is really cool. And so talk us through, you know, personally, how you guys transformed from being competitive, but then looking at golf, like your mission field where there, how would you go about and approach that mid round? Yeah, I definitely, for me personally, this past year, God really showed me how golf can be used as a mission field. And I became a lot, a lot more passionate about it this past year than I ever had been. And I would say collectively, our whole team was on the same page as well. So, you know, it goes as far as, you know, just, you know, starting a conversation with the girls that you're playing with, getting another story, but then also in the way that you carry yourself and in the way that you talk to your coaches and your teammates, because all of that goes noticed by your playing competitors. And, you know, they, I always remember like the girls that I played with that I had deep respect for because of the way that they carried themselves. And, you know, that I think stands out a lot. And when we, we always say to one another to be a light. And I think that's a huge way of being light. And then I think in another step further, this last year, as I was a fifth year, um, I got the opportunity to, I played with a lot of freshmen and sophomores. And in that, I felt like the Lord was really stirring in me that to encourage these girls as much as I can. And, and again, it didn't take away from like me being competitive against them. I'm, I'm very competitive and I always want to win. And, and it was, but it was a healthy competitiveness. And, you know, if I played with a freshman or sophomore and I just really respected their game or them as a person, like I would let them know. And I think that was a really cool opportunity in it. I just felt like, you know, if I were a freshman or sophomore and a fifth year said that to me that started encouraging me about my game or just that they really enjoyed playing with me, like that would really go a long way. And whether you speak the name of Jesus or not on the course in all these conversations, like the Lord can do incredible things through all of that. And I, me and my teammates had a lot of cool stories of just interactions with girls that um, 
God showed us how he was using it for something greater. Yeah, that's that's so cool to hear. It's yeah, it always leaves me kind of like speechless because that's that's what this is all about to um, amplify stories like that and for people to understand that hey, you know, the sport you play, what you do for a living is your mission field. If you're a follower of Christ, God has called you to spread his word where you're at and it's it's not a mistake where you're at in your life. You have a unique calling where you're at whether you're vocally sharing the gospel or just living it out in your daily life, you're a representation of Christ. And, you know, we talked about, you know, finding your identity in Christ and not the sport you play, but it also goes into now the, the very difficult transition for every athlete is when you have to hang up the cleats, you know, you transition from something you've done your entire life to basically at times saying, Hey, I'm Mary Kate. I'm a golfer. That's, that's who I am. To now, you know, golf is kind of, you know, not exactly what you do every day. You're kind of transitioning into the business world. Um, tell us a little bit about that and maybe some of the challenges that you've already faced as you're actively in that transition. Yeah, it, it definitely is a, a big transition, a big change. And, you know, in, in certain ways, it feels like everything's changing because, you know, playing sports competitively takes up so much of your life. And, you know, I'm only... I'm almost two months out, so I'm still fresh out. But the first month, I'd say it kind of felt like I was just taking time off as usual. But, you know, I find myself like this past weekend, I was visiting a friend and I I had this thought come up where I was like, oh, man, like I should be practicing right now. Like I can get back to practice when I get back. And then I was like, oh, wait, like I don't need to I don't need to go back to the golf course. I can if I want to. But um, so I would say just like the day-to-day routine is just different and, you know, it takes some getting used to making my own schedule. Um, I'm studying for the CPA exam right now. So making my own schedule, being disciplined to do that rather than having your own schedule set up for you. So that's just practically a challenge. And then I, you know, I worked through so much finding my identity in Christ in sports. And I don't, I don't know if I just assumed that it would just, you know, once I stopped playing sports, I would never struggle with identity ever again. But I can feel myself having moments where I start to find my identity in school or the CPA exam or even just starting my job in the fall. And so realizing that um, these lessons that I've learned and just the ways that the Lord has taught me to work through my finding my identity in him and not in other things will continue on with me um, continuously. And so those are some of the biggest things. And I'll also say too, I, I felt like I don't, I'm not, I don't deal well with change and I like a good routine and I like to what's familiar. And, you know, as I was pulling, driving home from our last tournament, I felt like the Lord was telling me that, you know, even though everything's changing around you, like I never change and I'm constant. And so being able to cling to the only constant thing in this life, um, which is the Lord has been really the biggest comforting thing to me. And when I remind myself of that, I feel like it makes it a lot easier to step into this new chapter and unknown season. Wow. That, that is good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. And there, you know, there's so much, there's so much fruit in what you were saying and to already realize that, I mean, it's, it's going to be a challenge. There's still going to be hardships down the road. And like you said, the identity piece is something that is there every single day. Even though, it, you know, sometimes I feel like playing sports, it's almost easier to be like, okay, my identity is not found in the sport because if it was, I would be a wreck. I would be a mess. <laughs> you know, I, I went over four today. I would, I would not feel good about myself. So sometimes I feel like it can be easier than for that. But then, you know, as the athlete, you, when you do something, you put your heart and soul into it. And so now you're, you know, training for your CPA exam, all of a sudden, that's what's consuming your thoughts. That's what's consuming your mind and your livelihood. And so you just have to continue to, you know, my identity is not found in this and consume yourself with um, scripture and stuff like that to continue pouring into that. And one of the the things that I'll say too, is um, even when you're, you know, now sitting behind a desk for a majority, you know, of your time and stuff to still find those areas where you can encourage your coworkers, it may look a little different because you're not having 
you know, a five hour conversation in between shots. You know, you, there is work that you got to do. You're, you're, you're plugging away on the computer, but there's ways at lunch and at the water cooler and stuff where you can encourage those. And then even what you were saying, you know, just the, that God is constant, you know, this world is changing all the time, you know, tomorrow's can look completely different than today, but just what you were saying, you know, to find comfort in the rock that God is constant. He is not changing. He is the same and that you can find that solace. Um, a lot of people don't have that. And so to hear that, and, you know, that's our hope is to continue to share this of here's where you can find that hope and peace in the, in this crazy world. So, you know, when is that CPA exam for you? Do you have a job already lined up? What is, what is kind of the next steps for you? Yeah, so I've already gotten, so the CPA exam is th four parts. So I've taken three, and then my fourth part I'll take at the end of July, and then I'll start, I'll, I'll start work at a public accounting firm in the beginning of September. So I'll, I'll finish up my master's and my CPA exam, and then I'll, I'll have a little break and then start my job. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's, it's off to almost like the real world, <laughs> you know, you've had this awesome experience of being an athlete and then but but god is still going to use those experiences that he taught you through sport to be able to translate into that so we're excited to hear you know more stories and follow along with your journey as you continue into what god has called you to do um if you were to give advice to you know maybe your younger self or another girl out there who's really trying to maybe they're on the recruiting journey trying to find something or find who they are you know in golf or in sport what kind of advice and encouragement would you give them today that's a good question um i think i would say that you know to just enjoy where you're at i i kept finding myself especially going through the recruiting process you know you're constantly looking forward um to, you know, like, oh, once I get to college and, you know, once I get recruited, but to just enjoy, enjoy the day-to-day -day grind, enjoy just the junior tournaments, enjoy it all, and just trust that the Lord will work it all out in his perfect timing. And I had kind of, I really stressed myself out a lot through the recruiting process. And I look back and wish that I hadn't because it, it all worked out and it always does. And so I would say to just um, trust that the Lord has plans to prosper you and that, you know, it, it does work out and to just have fun. And, you know, we're, we're not perfect. And so we don't have to be perfect. And the pressure of that when it's taken off um, always helps me to have a lot more fun just with where I'm at. Yeah, it's, it's always like, I wish I knew now what I knew back then. And to be able to, it's so hard to see God working in the real time if you don't slow down. And so, you know, it's taking those moments to recognize what God has already placed in your life. You know, the roof of your head, the air conditioning, all those blessings. And then to now be on the flip side and you look back at your golf career and you're like, man, he had his hand on every instance of that and all these things that he brought directly to me. And so it's a really cool revelation. I'm glad that you are able to look back at that now and see how God used you and put certain people in your life because um, some people don't get to get to do that. And so it's really cool. And I would encourage, you know, the people listening too, just to take some time today and to maybe five minutes in the car or something and just kind of think, think back on your life and the lessons that you've learned and how far you've come because it's, it's really, truly remarkable that God can take, you know, us people who fail literally constantly <laughs> and then to, to be able to use us to accomplish his work, um, is really cool. So thank you again for your time and, and willingness to just to share your heart and what God has, God has taught you. And, and if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of pray for you before we go ahead and close this out. Yeah, that's awesome. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, Mary Kate and her willingness just to share her heart and, you know, what you have brought her through and some of the life lessons that you've taught to her through, you know, her journey, God. Um, I pray for as she's kind of heading into these next steps and with her final leg of the CPA exam that you will just continue to give her that that peace without understanding, God, and um, or that surpasses understanding that you will just calm her mind just like you would on the golf course that she will, you know, know that she put in the work and the training that you'll be with her every step of that way. And I pray for her journey as she 
you know, starts the job to God and transitioning out of sport, that you will continue to um, reveal her, yourself to her um, and that you will h- help her be a light to those um, that she surrounds herself. You already have those interactions ordained that she will have in the workplace and the meetings and the calls that she may be a part of God and that she'll be a light and that people will notice that there's something different about her um, and that you will give her those opportunities to help others come to know you and be encouraged through that work, God. Um, thank you again for the opportunity on this this podcast, just to be able to highlight stories like Mary Kate's and to be able to amplify um, the voice that you have given us. And we pray in your name. Amen. You're listening to the Identity Sports Podcast, where we dive into the world of faith, sports, and inspiration with athletes from across the country. I'm your host, Zach Vogel.